All right, guys, hope you're having um, <clears throat> a good time this evening or this morning whenever you're choosing to watch this. I'll bet you've been walking around the house and thinking, you know what, man, if I could only figure out how to how to solve uh, rational expressions and simplify rational expressions. Well, today is your lucky day. We are going to work on simplifying rational expressions. Keyword here is rational. Okay, when I think rational, all right. When I think rational, what should I think? And that answer should be, I should think of fractions. And so we're going to do some different types of reducing, simplifying, uh, finding zeros of fractions. So let's get to it. The first thing I want to get to is we have, have talked about in the past that when we have fractions, um, we cannot have a zero on the bottom because that's undefined and so what we're going to start off with right away is let's say I have the expression uh, 8t squared all over x minus 8 the first set of problems they're going to ask you are what are the values that would be excluded out of this now we've done this a little bit before when we did factoring so there's a number that we can substitute in for x. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have put x there. They're not going to get that crazy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go with t. Okay. So on, on the numerator, t can be anything. It, it doesn't make a difference. But on the denominator, t cannot be combined with negative 8 to make that thing 0. So the only thing... that makes t minus 8 0 is positive 8 okay so t in this case can be anything except 8 all right again the slash through the equal sign is not equal so t can be anything except 8 so let's take that just a step further and let's go with something like uh, this is one of the examples out of the book. Okay. Now what do you notice with that r squared minus 36? That should look familiar to us. A couple chapters ago, um, we were working on factoring. And that's a difference of two squares. And so what we would do with that is we would break that denominator down into r plus 6 and r minus 6. Taking the square root of the r squared, putting it first, then the square root of the 36, putting it second, and then adding the plus minus. And so then we would tee this up to get our two factors. Okay, So that would be negative 6 and 6. But in this case, what we've actually done is we have found the zeros, or what would make it 0 on the bottom, which is what we don't want it to be. So the excluded values are negative 6 and 6. Because if I put those in there, let's look at that real quick. Negative 6 squared is 36. 36 minus 36 is 0. 6 squared is 36. And again, 36 minus 36 is 0. So these are my excluded values. It can be anything except negative 6 and 6. Okay, so there's our excluded values. You are going to have to do a little bit of factoring, so combining some things that we've done in the past. So let's take a look at a new problem. Okay, let's have some fun with it. Let's go. Um, we, have, we have some multiplication here. Um, we're actually going to do some adding and exponents. We're going to do some subtracting of exponents. We're going to do some division. So really, we're going to do all four different operations right here. Uh, what we want to do is we want to get the numerator to be one value. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's multiply the negative 3 times the 4. And we always multiply numbers together, and that's going to give us negative 12. Now, over here to the side, I'm going to take uh, x squared times x to the fifth. Okay, and x squared times x to the fifth, this is from way back. That's going to give us x to the seventh. Remember that we add exponents when we're multiplying. And then on the bottom, we have 9x 
to the sixth. Now let's take the numbers. Um, nine's not going to go into negative 12, but I do have a negative divided by a positive, so I know my answer is going to be negative. And now I just reduce that. 12 ninths reduced is going to be 4 over 3. <clears throat> and then x to the seventh divided by x to the sixth. What do we do with those exponents? In that case, we subtract, giving us just x to the first. Okay, so our final answer is negative 4x over 3, or negative 4 thirds x, however you would like to read it. Okay, and that's simplifying a rational expression. So let's look at another one. Okay, 2x plus 18 divided by x squared plus 8x minus 9. We need to look at factoring. On the top, we don't have any x squareds, so it's not a trinomial, but we do have some common factors. What's common between 2 and 18? So we're going to take out the 2, and that's going to give us x plus 9. Okay, x plus 9. And on the bottom, um, we do have a trinomial. So we're going to look at factoring it with two parentheses. Now, green flag should be should be waving in your, your head right now, and not just because NASCAR season is upon us. But if I have an x plus 9 on the top, more than likely they're going to give me an x plus 9 on the bottom. That way something will cancel. So let's take a look at this. If we factor this trinomial, we know our factors have to give us 9, and they have to add up to equal, excuse me, factors have to multiply to get negative 9 and add up to be 8. So let's, let's take the clue we got from the top and put the plus 9 there. Okay, so that would mean our second factor would have to be x minus 1, because 9 minus 1 is 8, and 9 times negative 1 is negative 9. So that's what we got. So anytime we have something on top of a fraction and bottom of a fraction that is the same, we can cancel it, and so our final answer is 2 over x minus 1. Okay, so factor everything that you can, and then solve. Okay, final one. They're going to ask you to find... the zeros. Okay, they're going to ask us to find the zeros of this thing. And so we're going to factor it just like we've done everything else. Can't do anything on the bottom, that's the x minus 3, but I'll bet that when we factor this trinomial on the top, we're going to get an x minus 3 somewhere. So let's find out. So we need something that multiplies to get negative 18, and that adds to get uh, 3. And so I think I'm going to choose 6 and 3, and I know my x is going to, or my 3 is going to be negative because I've got a negative 3 on the bottom. That's just the way it's going to work out. So positive 6 minus 3, that's the 3. Perfect. 6 times negative 3, negative 18. That factors perfectly. And so these top and bottom will cancel, leaving me x, uh, x plus 6. And then if I'm going to find the zeros, what I do is I take my answer and I set it equal to 0, finding the zeros. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. And so the zeros or zero in this case of this equation is negative six. Okay, so that's finding the zeros. So do everything we did in the second set of problems, do all the factoring, do all the canceling, and whatever your answer is, set it equal to zero and solve it. Okay, well, we will see you guys um, Monday morning. Have a great weekend.